Hey, what's going on everyone? Wally here and we are back with some more Overwatch competitive gameplay. Today we are going to be taking a little turn here. Instead of playing DPS characters, we're actually going to bust out the support or the healer characters. Now in today's video, we are going to be playing Moira, who I believe is one of the strongest and best healers in the current meta. Now of course that is simply an opinion, but her overall kit is just fantastic. She has the ability to heal, she has the ability to reposition very quickly in a difficult situation which gives her disengage tools as well as engage tools to hop into the right situation whether that to be deal damage or to assert yourself and your presence so you can heal the rest of your team so let's just talk about Moira and her kit real quick so her primary ability of course you'll see now I'm using her damage ability she also has a primary heal essentially the way that it works is your heal has a limit or a bar at a certain point, once you've healed so much, that bar disappears and you can no longer heal. In order to regenerate it, it slowly happens. Or, of course, you can do what I'm doing now and use damage, and then it generates much, much quicker. Uh, so, essentially, in order to be effective with her, you need to find the balance of using the primary heal and the primary damage. And that way you can take full advantage of those heals. If you're consistently just healing and not using your damage attack, you will not be able to heal effectively. She also has her Biotic Orb, which can, again, be damage and heal. So in this specific fight here with Roadhog, you'll see that I've used it as a damage ability. I then used my engagement tool, or disengage, my movement ability to be very aggressive and to help finish off that Roadhog. Of course, you saw me in this video use it earlier as a disengage tool. You also saw me use Core Lessons there just a moment ago. Essentially what that does is it just deals damage to every enemy it hits, or it heals every player that it hits. The goal is to try and get as many targets as you can in a line to take full effect of it. You can also use it as a sniping tool, for example, if you wanted to eliminate an enemy Pharah. It's really effective for that because it's practically a laser. So here, you notice the Reinhardt charge. So I immediately reposition, so that way I'm not up and close and personal because he easily could just spin around, use his hammer, and deal 75 damage to me. So, of course, I did not want that to happen. We did finish him off quite quickly, so it was not going to be an issue. And now you can see that we are just basically kind of keeping him funneled here in the choke point. Now, what we want to do is use the Biotic Orb, both the heal and the damage, in order to build up our ultimate. So, the enemy Moira used her ult here. I waited a moment, and then I used mine essentially to counter it. I understand that I'm not going to get the most amount of my heals or even damage. But when the enemy Moira throws her out, that is a large amount of damage and even damage reduction that they're going to have. Essentially, every damage we deal, she's going to just heal up as long as she aims right. The Bastion had a great ult here. He basically just kind of hopped in there as the team pushed. Had a solid ult. It wasn't really being effective earlier. However, he nearly killed the Torbjorn and then turned onto me for the last portion of his ultimate. And they were able to capture point one. So, it did take them a few pushes, which was great. Now here, I can see that two of my teammates have already died. So pushing to where Sigma did for myself without having a shield is quite dangerous. Also knowing that they have a Bastion and he happens to be doing what a lot of Bastions would do. Which is hanging out on the uh, payload there. So what, really what we want to do here, outside of just keeping my team healed up and staying healthy, is we just want to get chip damage down or essentially just throw our Biotic Orb that deals damage to build our ultimate charge you'll notice i keep doing that throughout the video every opportunity you can get to toss it in a choke where they are not paying attention or really there's not anything to heal you would just go through and throw that damage or out because it actually is a quite a large source of damage and it also is frustrating because no matter where you are that orb if it bounces in a certain direction is going to hit you here so you can see here with the core lessons uh i'm actually looking to just focus on the healers not sure if it's Coalescence or Coalescence, uh, if I'm saying it wrong, I do apologize for you. Uh, Moira remains here. I have not played Moira extensively, I would say she's probably my most played healer, and there are certain opportunities uh, I still have with her, but I feel I can play her confidently enough to be able to give a detailed guide on her. Now I see the Ash on the top here, so Ash is going to sit there and be annoying and try and poke us. So you notice that I threw that orb up there and I have dealt an insane amount of damage. I actually kill the Ash, which removes that threat from the top here. And that's such a tight space on the top that the orb continued to bounce around and there was nobody else to hit. So it actually took her out, which was awesome. And there are a lot of things you can do with that. That orb bounces quite often. 
um, and it will go pretty much everywhere. So here, we're focusing on the Bastion. That was an amazing field um, by our Baptiste here, and the Bastion was all alone, and he did not realize that his team was gone here. Sorry guys, so this video is more of a, it is a guide with Moira on how to use her, but at the same time kind of giving my uh, detailed descriptions on the gameplay itself and essentially how we're going to use Moira in this situation. Now of course these situations will apply to a lot of different games. Again, another Biotic Orb, I bounced it off. I don't really need to heal anyone up here. My Baptiste is missing maybe like 20 health, so I'm going to heal him up, but I happen to take out their Moira. And if you can kill a healer at the start of a fight, that is amazing. So there you notice I repositioned and I avoided that hammer swing. If I would have taken one hammer swing, that fire strike would have finished me off, so it's really good I avoided that. It is unfortunate I took the fire strike to the face. However, um, we did manage to live the engagement here. Now we're gonna again back it up. At this point, I can see that they're quite, we're pushing quite hard. Our Arissa is in a sense almost trapped there and she's probably going to die. And pretty much everyone else on my team has died. I threw out that healing orb and I contemplated in pushing forward but I realized that my teammate over there was pretty low, the Orissa and the Torbjorn went around the back, so I was on my own, and I did not feel confident pressing up knowing they were all hanging out there on the corner. Now again, I'm gonna throw out the orb, bounce it off the back wall, and try and apply some pressure. We can see that they have, are kind of snacking up on the payload here. So really what we need to do is focus down their DPS and their healers. I noticed right away that the McCree is off to the right and there's no shield, so I'm gonna focus him down first. And I just managed to avoid that there. What I should have done here in the situation, I'll, I'll, you'll see what happens here. So I avoid the pin. Lucio is back there. And he takes him out. Sorry, the Doomfist, not the Lucio. And he lands a Fire Strike and then the Hammer Swing. I should have gone the opposite direction, back towards uh, where our spawn was. And I probably could avoid being killed. I did have the um, my Disengage tool readily available. If I would have used it to go the opposite direction, I would have been safe. So definitely a mistake there. And I would say if we're watching this gameplay as a whole, there are opportunities where on my Biotic Orb, I could heal versus using damage. But you also want to ensure that you are maximizing your damage too. If you don't have a lot of heals and you're really going to only heal up 20 health, uh, if that will save someone from dying, then certainly. But as of right there, our team just got completely wiped. So my goal here, I know most of my team is dead. My goal here was to basically get that Bastion off the payload. However, the Torbjorn had already taken him out, which was great. He used his Molten Core and he got killed in the process, but we immediately kind of gained the upper hand because we took two or three of their players out and we were able to kind of push them all back. So I throw this here because that is the door of which they're going to walk out of and it's going to continue to bounce and I'm going to basically get every ounce of damage that I can there. You notice I gained 10% on my ultimate charge, which is huge. And of course, here comes the Bastion and they're going to round the corner yet again. So before the fight even starts, I gain 20% of my ultimate charge simply by using the damage biotic orb that cannot be underestimated. Just ensure that when it, there is an opportunity to heal, that you do take full advantage of that. So Moira's disengage tool is amazing. They did nerf it so as you can't avoid everything. However, you can avoid things like Sigma Zolt, so I didn't take any damage there. If you have it on cooldown, I just recommend that you throw Moira's healing biotic orb at the ground so it heals you and your teammates as soon as you hit the ground. Here I throw the biotic orb simply to try and deal damage. I see the Reinhardt. I don't want to deal with him. He's not the biggest threat. That's that McCree. So the moment the McCree is dead, I want to get my team all healed up. I know there was still a Reinhardt here, and I see the Torbjorn killed the Reinhardt. They have one person left with just a Moira, and Moira is not going to 1v for us. So I just focus on keeping my team all alive and then setting up um, to try and just stop from that final push, and we did so. We just managed to stall at the very last second to avoid them getting the third point, and that is huge because that last point is hard to press. So now here, going into this on attack, the Reinhardt asked for a Mei because he wanted the Mei to boost him over the wall. Uh, she failed to do so, so instead he's just going to go around. I'm going to throw down that Biotic Orb to get some early chip damage. My goal is to take out their healers, of course. That should always be the number one goal, is to focus the healers to DPS. The Maid does freeze him, but I immediately see the Reaper, and I back off, because that Reaper will kill me. I cannot outduel a Reaper. Reaper's healing will outduel your damage. He will outheal your heals. You just cannot fight Reaper as Moira if he's looking at you. He will win that engagement every time. May also has herself heal, so we have to be careful. 
So I'm going to just back it up here because I can see my team has been killed and you need to disengage. Nothing wrong with disengaging and living. It's not that I'm not healing my team. So for example, that Reinhardt was overcommitted. He did not realize we were all gone and he continued to push. Now I made a really big mistake there and unfortunately have to reset now on a death because I just kind of stayed there. I had my disengage tool available and I just didn't react quick enough. I should have just moved off to the left of this disengage tool, broke line of vision, and I would have been safe. So this May really is just trying to keep us separate. She's not doing an immensely good job. She is stalling uh, the healers from getting to DPS immediately, which is certainly uh, great and will help. She did a great job there at the wall too. She was very fortunate to place that as I unleashed my ultimate, basically just to counter the other one, to counter the other Moy result. Um, and if you look in the chat, you'll notice that the enemy team is winning immensely in this fight here. So I'm trying to heal up. Again, I'm going to disengage. I'm back up. I know the Sigma's going to co come around the corner. This Sigma was very greedy in round one. And then I use this to disengage. I'm really trying to avoid that ult, or that uh, opposing Moira's biotic orb because that would have really hurt and killed me had it touched me one more time. I used the disengage tool there again because the moment I got pulled by that Orissa's uh, ball there, I forget the proper term for it, uh, I was basically vulnerable, and I wanted to avoid that. Now, I see this. I hear the Reaper, though. So, there he is. I see him, and we happen to interrupt his ultimate, which is huge, because had he landed that, that could have killed us. So, now, I'm going to keep my Sigma healed as best as I can. It's really hard to heal uh, somebody who's dealing uh, damage directly to from Reaper. I unfortunately made a huge mistake there. And I used my disengage tool to get away from Sigma's ult, and I actually ended up placing myself in it. And he picked up two of us uh, using that ultimate. So that was really, really unfortunate here, and I should just pay it a little bit more attention here. Now I have my ultimate, but I'm not going to use it right away. The reason being is I can see two of my teammates just died, and it is rare where you want to use your coalescence as basically just a damaging tool. You'll see right now in this instance, this is one of those occasions, and here's why. Like I said earlier, healer should be your number one target. When I throw that orb out, this Ana dies. The moment I see that, I need to make a play for my team to know to go in. So I focus the Reaper, awesome. Their DPS, a huge source of their damage, and their primary healer, or one of their, I guess their secondary healer, is now gone. Now I'm going to disengage and reposition because the Orisa saw me. I don't want to give that up. The Moira leaves me B because she can sit there and see that if they don't get on the point, they're going to lose it. And at this point, she is blocked by her own maze wall. And we manage to clean up both the May and the Moira. And then I avoid the uh, grenade there from the Anna. And I really was just trying to stall. Now, in this situation, you should not do what the rest of my team is doing. If you are already close to overtime, and this is not the final point, don't run off trying to stall because you'll get killed like that. And there was only two of us on there capturing it. If everybody else would have been on it, we could have captured it faster. So if things are already really, really close, don't get greedy. Don't get overzealous. Just play it safe and be happy with the, with the fact that you're going to capture that point and move on to the next one. Because we don't have a lot of time to get down this choke. We only have two minutes to make it. And they pushed this portion much faster than what we did. So we need to be really careful here. You can see that they feel out of position here because our payload's practically in the Orisa shield and they still haven't moved because they feel the moment they step out they're going to get obliterated. But actually what they manage to do is they just pop out of that orb, they flank the rest of my team who is sitting there on the payload and kill us. I felt really bad for that Hanzo. I simply just needed to heal him a little bit or throw out the healing biotic orb and I could have saved his life so I felt really bad about that. Here, I see my uh, the entire enemy team lined up. However, one of the uh, one of my teammates there, and then Reaper drops down for a little, expecting us to all come there. He was trying to predict our movements, and he failed to do so, which was crucial for us because had the Reaper gotten kills with that, that uh, would have been something entirely different. However, he did not. So as a Moira again, I'm going to use my disengagement tool to avoid that damage, and I do trying to keep my Junkrat healed. You'll notice there, though, my healing is all out. I cannot heal anybody anymore. In order to do so, I have to deal damage, so that's why that Arisa died. My Biotic Orb was off cooldown, and then I was unable to actually heal because I had not done enough damage. 
and then Reaper kind of focused me down. I could have disengaged because it was off cooldown. However, I did not realize he's going to commit. That was me just not making a good judgment call. So we need to group up. We have 33 seconds left. By the time we get there, we're probably going to have around 25 seconds to make one final stand to get this payload there. This uh, fight, this attack round, was much more difficult than it should have been. We sat there and we did pretty well on defense and pulled something crazy out at the last moment to stop them from getting the third and final point. So right now, really what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to rebuild my healing, because I know this fight, this fight's what matters. This fight is going to determine whether or not we lose the game, or whether we get to keep contesting and try and push to the final point. So I really just want to focus them down. I see the Zenyatta on the far side here, so I want to keep my teammates alive if I can. And I'm not worried about the Moira. I was worried about the Reaper, and now it's just the Moira, and then there's the Reaper there. The moment that that Biotic Orb was landed on that Reaper was huge for us. Um... That is probably Reaper's biggest weakness, is if you have an Anno who can consistently land that Biotic Orb, he loses a lot of his functionality. Reaper thrives off as his consistent heals. So, Anna is a great counter to him. Moira, like I said, she cannot outduel him no matter what you do. This guy's thing is literally getting no heals. We are healing him up. Um, I am, at this point, I realize that I am probably doing more damage than what I should be. The problem is that he's not getting no heals, it's that Reaper out damages my heals, and then the consistent biotic orbs from both parties, both their Anna and then our Anna. So Anna and I just really need to focus on kind of syncing up the biotic orb in my heals, and I just need to focus on healing a little bit more than damage. However, it's just difficult um, as a Moira knowing when to swap between the healing and the damage biotic orb. So, here you see I use the Coalescence here very offensively. I see that they are kind of all stalled in one little section. We pick up the double kill, and I make a great play here. Now, Torbjorn actually um, falls back. I see the Reaper ult. We heal everybody up, and then we spin around. We're going to throw this down, and I'm basically still alive. So, this entire fight, I've managed to stay alive. I've made really good plays in this final fight. And at this point, they are all running in staggered. So as long as we can consistently kill these players and not allow them to keep selling for the entire team to get back, we will do just fine. Reaper right now is the biggest threat. So he's on the far side. So I'm going to spin around, take out the healer, take out the Reaper. I, of course, am not the one that does all the damage. I just simply pick them off uh, or kind of deal some excess damage. I throw down the damage biotic orb and May steps off the point, And the moment uh, she does, she gets killed. And we manage to secure the victory here. I'm the only one that actually picked up any sort of uh, medals here, and I got four gold medals. Uh, well, guys, if you did enjoy today's video, busting out the Moira healer, please leave a like, subscribe for more if you've not already, and I will catch y'all later.